Now that's the interesting story of my life. I grew up in Europe after the war. I was born during the war, Second World War, so I am a senior artist. My father was an American, my mother was Scottish, and um, my father died when I was young. But one of the things my mother used to do, he lived about 60 miles north of London. Every year she would take myself and my two siblings to London to go to museums and ballets and orchestras. Now my mother ran a boarding house, so she wasn't a cultured or a wealthy person, but she believed that the children should be brought up with uh, that kind of uh, uh, access. So one year we went to London and uh, we were taken to the Tate Museum. Now being 11 years old, that's the last thing you would want to be for a young 11 year old. You'd rather go to the London Zoo. But while we were there looking around, we entered a room that I had to stop because being 11 years old, something just clicked and I saw these, this volume of paintings that was so incredible that I remember turning to my mother and to the effect saying, you know, I want to do that. So when we got back to my small town, I started taking drawing lessons. It was only a few years later, maybe 10 years later, that I realized who that artist was. And it was J.M.W. Turner one of the great English uh, uh, landscape artists. And the works that I was looking at were the land and steam and locomotive series that he did. They're just rich, rich, exciting paintings. So that was my first introduction and that stayed with me forever. I think the surprising thing would probably be uh, not to use a very high word, but I would say my work is not lineal in the sense that I go from one, like A, B, C, to learn how to do a particular thing, say like a portraiture painter would uh, learn to paint figures and continues until he has a, a really strong grip on portraiture. Mine is more lateral, that is it spreads out so that anything that interests me becomes what I want to do. And so my body of work doesn't have that kind of lineality of going from A to B to C. It just goes all over the place because I follow my idea. I'm more of an idea person than I am a, a, product, a, a you know, finished product person. There are some painters I really like. Carl Walker is one of them. Um, Ansel Kaif is another. Um, to me, they're probably the more close in keeping to the, what I do in terms of a thought process. When, uh, when I saw Carl Walker's work early on in her career, she happened to go to the Rhode Island School of Design where my daughter went. So, not that I personally met her, but I saw some of her student work and I thought that woman has an understanding of history in a way that no one's presented before. And uh, so it's people like that uh, that, it, that I like. And uh, so that's the kind of uh, you know, work that influenced me. I love Carol. Of course, social, social situations too. I mean, I'm a great history buff. And I like uh, what history offers to me in terms of storytelling. I mean, if you can really pin down what, what art is, it's really storytelling. In fact, it's even proselytizing. It's like saying, I have the way, but you have to follow me to understand it. So in a sense, it's like, again, not to sound um, uh, High fluting here, but it's it is very much like a shaman that uh, shows uh, directions for you. you know? When I saw her first works, which were the cutout, the black cutouts pasted over 
uh, Courier Lives uh, prints. They were small at that time. I've seen a, a larger show of theirs at the Metropolitan. Um, but in the early ones, it was so perfect because the size of those prints were the size of prints that people did use in their homes. And the black and white negative uh, cutouts were the things that the aristocracy were using to document their own families. And so I already knew that when I came into her show, when I saw her documenting the black experience through aristocratic um, uh, tools, I said, hmm, she's right on, right in touch, getting the idea, she's got a good idea. The same thing with Ansel Keiko, these early works, he was documenting the pain of growing up in uh, post-war Germany where the idea of Nazism was almost uh, wiped out because of the politics involved. But when they came to enlighten themselves later on, 20, 30 years old later, then you had artists uh, uh, becoming aware of it and documenting, and he was one of them. His early works are really incredible with the uh, railroad tracks leading to the uh, stone buildings. I mean, they weren't so, they weren't so suggestive that you couldn't see the metaphor, see? They weren't propaganda, in other words. I would say to a young artist who really believes that he wants to be an artist, he need, needs to never put no in front of anything. He needs to be open to literally everything. There may be need, there may be artists he doesn't particularly care for, but he should open up to find out if he can make a judgment like that. And that means learning a little bit about it, maybe a lot about it. I know in my own experience when Warhol came around back in the early 60s when I first saw his show, um, I was very negative, and I wrote a paper on it for my uh, professor, my university professor, and he took me inside, he said, he said the very same words, he said, you can't write an awful negative thing like this without understanding what you're looking at. You cannot do that in art. You have to be open to everything. You may in the end not like it, because, but you put the effort into finding out why you wouldn't like it. You know? I usually work with oils on canvas. I work with acrylic on canvas. But I also am very um, useful using other means like uh, creating models, uh, creating sculptures, which they're not used by themselves. They're usually used in the combination with the painting. So a painting for me is the absorption of all these different elements because, and again, I've been around a long time. A lot of things have influenced me. Psychology has influenced, especially Jung, Jungian psychology. That the idea that objects can transfer and absorb energy and spirit is really important. And I've found that when I create paintings with those kinds of objects, you're creating these little spaces where you walk into, as opposed to something that on the surface you're looking at. So I find that to be a very generous way of uh, working my story, you know. So. I mean, it's like this painting. This painting is part of my animal series, The Hunt, where we have literally just given no acknowledgement to animals, that they're only there for ourselves and, and to hunt and trophy, and yet there's a great human mythology around animals that we've lost. And some of my paintings deal with that. Uh, there's a couple of that I did with uh, deer, and it talks about the uh, uh, Navajo. They're both, they're both about a gift. The animal is a gift to us. That the warrior, when he hunts, is really not hunting. It's the animal coming to him and he says, the animal says to him, I will give you my life, but what I want from you is I want you to acknowledge me and the way you can do this is through song and dance and clothing. And that's what the Navajos felt. And that's what they did. They, you know, a lot of their work is about the deer uh, dance and all kinds of uh, things. And uh, so 
It was read to me by one of my professors in college, in English class, as a matter of fact. And he started reading poems from Native Americans, and that's one that stuck with me and stayed with me all these years. And so it's a very good acknowledgement of the access to the spirit of that animal. So. Art has always had um, a voice depending on who the artist is. Not always a quiet voice, but a voice. I think the economic climate and the political climate, political climate is, comes as no surprise to me because I think a series of works that I did called Disturbed Rooms, 12 directly on that, is that we actually live in an age of anxiety, but we don't realize it. We, we, what we do, we surround ourselves with things that take our thoughts away from our in, inner thoughts and our inner thinking, our inner spirit, so that we become, in a sense, thoughtless. So what we're seeing now, I think, is a resurrection of a particular group of people that had 500 years to think about this, and it's finally rising to the surface. I walked into this gallery probably four or five years ago, and I thought it was one of the most beautiful spaces I've seen in a long time. I really did. I thought, God, it's a really good setup. It got all these rooms, got the big room, got the little rooms. You can divide up the artists into different things, you know, photography could be, and I thought it was really a pleasant space. And I thought, I, you know, I'd like to find out how to join this group to uh, see if I could uh, show some work here. I think it would be perfect for me, and, and it proved to be such.